Welcome to You V Me, my brand new YouTube series where it's going to be Battle of the Spouses and a lot of good clean fun. Each week I will be setting Robbie the Ranger the task of cleaning a different room within our home. Once completed, I will be bringing out my little friend, the black light. It's a UV light and it's going to pick up any bits that Robbie the Ranger has missed. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Will the light set him free or is he going to be left in the dark? This is UV. I am setting Robbie the Ranger the challenge of cleaning the kitchen. Let's see how he fares up here. Please Jesus, let it be better than his bathroom clean. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be on his side for this one. Am I worried about the kitchen? No. The thing about Hayley is she's a control freak, so if I don't get the kitchen right, I'm in big trouble. Hayley forgets, leech is my surname, and this week I'm going to leech it, preach it, bleach it. Bleach needs to be used properly to be effective. You can't put a flower in a bum hole and call it a vase. The thing about last week is I didn't leave the bleach on. However, this week I'm going all out. <laughs> in the lead role as Joseph in the Christmas Nativity. He was so proud of himself that he'd used bleach. But the problem with bleach is you need to use it correctly. I like to clean the houses, I like to get underneath and Robbie comes walking in like John Travolta from Saturday Night Fever and actually when it comes to cleaning you want to be more MC Hammer and right now I want to tell Robbie you can't touch this
Okay, first of all, my whole kitchen smells like there's been an explosion at the Domestos factory. And I like that a great deal. It does smell very bleachy, bleachy in here, which is nice. Um, it looks on the surface like Robbie the Ranger has done quite a good job. I'm not sure whether he's done any polishing. This oven hob looks a bit smeary and so does the sink. But I'm really proud of you. On the surface, it does look really clean. Well done. It took me 10, 15 minutes, sir. I went for bleach this time. So I can't go wrong. Is this the only thing you use? Yeah. The whole of the kitchen you just use this kitchen cleaner mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. And no, and then I uh, did the um I gave it a little bit of a lime scale. But you, you did that and then you didn't polish. Did you polish? No. No, but you've got to clean before you disinfect. <laughs> but you didn't polish it afterwards, no? With the microfiber cloth. No, you can't, you can't, no, 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 your time's up now, you can't. Okay, fine. You can't, right, get the UV light. You can't start adding to it, we'll do the UV light and that will be the real test to see how clean Come this in. is. And then I am going to bounce into action with the Haley's Help Clean. I'm feeling good about this one. Okay, let's go. Bring in the UV light. Let's go in with the UV light. So the first thing I want to check are the buttons. These are notoriously missed by many people across the globe and these are high traffic areas. These will be particularly germy and these are places you do want to be cleaning and disinfecting on a daily basis. So let's have a look. Well, you know I didn't do that. Yeah, so the wall's not been cleaned. I thought we would have learnt this lesson from the toilet, but obviously not. Well, I'm not weeing in the kitchen. <laughs> You're not weeing, but what that will be is, it will be some sort of um, liquid or bacteria that is like resting on the surface and we don't really want that. We don't want to be seeing any of these specks. Let's move over to this one. I mean this one. Look, you can see here, these, these ones that are glowing brighter, these will all be little bits of bacteria that have been missed from like finger marks. And I mean the switches themselves, they're like fluorescent. And then the final switch as well, that also has got, you can see where it's glowing. Mm. The bits that are glowing, these will be areas that have been touched and here is a hot spot for bacteria. So if I then touch that now and then go off and start preparing food in here, I'm just going to be um, contaminating all the food, all the surfaces. So you probably should have done the switches, babe. See that? Mm. The UV light doesn't lie. You can see that you've missed bits there. Like I can visually see that. And what you probably should have used on the surfaces first is, it's, I love the fact that you've used bleach in here by the way. I love you for that. You are like my hero. But, but it's, bleach isn't an actual cleaner. It's a disinfectant. It's a sanitizer. This will be something that's on our work units that needs cleaning off so you need that power of clean so bleach is brilliant I, like i'm not scared of that because i know that it's like it look it will literally just be like baked on food or something but what will happen is with that baked on food it will it's probably actually pancake mix from my callum was making his protein pancakes but what will happen is um 
where that's food left over, mm. if that's not cleaned off, it will eventually then turn into bacteria and you've got a dose of salmonella, my friend, and you've turned into, you've gone from Robbie the Ranger to Sally Salmonella. To be fair, the rest of the surfaces do look really, really clean. I will give you that. Did you do, did you clean the knife block? These are notoriously germy. People will often clean their knives and then if your knives comes out of the dishwasher, you whack it on there. If there's germs on this, all you're doing is contaminating the knives. So this is another area you would want to look at cleaning and sanitizing because you're storing your knives on it. Right, let's move on to the oven. I mean, this is really specky. Babe, did you do the actual hob itself? Or just the top? Well, I think we both know the answer. <sighs> Look at that! <laughs> Robin! <laughs> It literally looks like Shrek's taking a poo on the hob. Look at it, it looks like some sort of glowing, it literally looks like, you know those glow sticks you get? It mm. looks like one's burst all over our hob. Robbie not cleaning the hob hasn't shocked me. He's a surface cleaner after all. But the problem here is, not cleaning the hob, for me, is like not wiping your anus after you've done a poo. You're going to end up with skid marks. Off though. I can't even... Of course, you can't see it, but this is why it needs to be done. Because, you know, the UV light shows you what the eye doesn't want to see. And there you go. You're right, you can't see that, visually. You, I can't see that that's there, but as soon as we do that, I mean, I just want to outside, check the other side. Mind. No, it's not out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. The only thing I want out of sight right now is him. Because my mind is ready to jump off the Titanic right now after seeing that absolute iceberg of bacteria and old food all over my hob. So I'm going to be tackling that in a second because that is gross. I mean, God love you, but you've tried. I will give you that, you have tried, but let's move over to the dishwasher. Yeah, put it on. Okay, you put it on, but there's smears all over the front, so you've not cleaned that, have you, or polished it. There's, I can clearly see, there's the UV light is showing up residue here and on the actual handle bit, although it's only like a tiny amount, there is definitely mm. a glowing. Look, you see where it goes fluorescent? There's like a little, a little speck there, right there, that is glowing. Again, we don't know what that is, but if it's bacteria, Again, that's a high traffic area, so. What about the sink? The sink looks quite good. <laughs> the sink does look quite good. I mean, I think these bits are like dust. There's tiny little dots, and I think they're, yeah, looking at them, I can see they're like fibers, so they're probably from the microfiber cloth. But the rest of the sink looks quite good. Things sinks are, they're actually statistically dirtier than a toilet. I mean, there's something really glowing there. That's definitely bacteria. That's full on blue. I mean, I think you've done okay. And the, what about the kettle? Did you do the kettle? No. No. Let's 
I can see on the handles, they're definitely back to, I mean, look at that. That is absolutely glowing right there. Okay, well, the fridge, you've not done that for sure. The hell is that on it? That's like handprints, which means all of that has the potential to make us unwell. What did you do with the floor? I mopped it. Okay, to be fair, the floor doesn't look that bad. Oh no, see, look, look here, look here. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. And this is why you do the Cinderella method, people. Look at that on the baseboards. This is why I tell you Cinderella method, because when you're on your hands and knees, you can wipe down these bits. A mop, is not, a mop is not gonna wipe those bits. You, babe, you can clearly see no, that. Look I at that, it's like no, a colony. It's literally like the handmaid's tail. Blessed be the fruit. It's like the handmaid's tail. They're all waiting in their little colonies. I mean, I can't. Look at that. Babe! <laughs> well, I've you... done my day. I feel like you've just come in here. You've saturated the place in bleach and gone. The jobs are good. Am I pleased with how Robbie the Ranger cleaned the kitchen? My answer to that is McDonald's has reopened and they've got a new meal on the menu. It's called a sad meal. I am really, really sad about what Robbie has done in that kitchen and the amount of bacteria that I have seen lurking around. We all know that our kitchen sinks are notoriously dirty. They are, in fact, dirtier than a toilet seat. However, other hot spots in the kitchen to look out for that are also pretty grimy are these. It is the knobs on your oven. What you need to do is take these off if you can. Mine just come off like this. Don't put the spring in water. You wanna leave that to one side, but these bits are absolutely fine to soak in some antibacterial washing up liquid and then give them a good scrub. Try and use either um, Oxo Good Grips or a toothbrush or some sort of scrubbing brush to really get inside all the crevices. These are highly touched areas with things like food and these are a hot spot, my friends, for bacteria. you want to do when it comes to tackling your hob is remove everything from the top of the hob. I like to put these through the dishwasher. I have a motto in life and that motto is if it ain't tied down put it in the dishwasher and that is exactly what I do. I whack these all inside the dishwasher so I know that they've been cleaned and sterilized properly and if you don't have a dishwasher Fear not, you can use antibacterial washing up liquid and give them a scrub in your sink. As always, we are going to do the C before D method. We're going to clean before we disinfect. This particular Sif cream cleaner is brilliant for cleaning with and once we have got off all the baked on grease and grime on, our, on top of our hobs, we can then go in with some bleach and sanitize the area.
in my home, appliances or otherwise, if it is movable, it needs to come out and be cleaned the whole of the area, the sides, the back, the underneath, the walls, anywhere that you can get to, it needs cleaning. For me, it isn't out of sight, out of mind. It's out of sight, out of control. Those germs and bacteria are gonna be out of control if you are not getting to them. What can I say? I'm a control freak. and the work surfaces, you wanna make sure that you are using a cleaner to get rid of any grease or grime, and you wanna pay attention to the whole of the work unit. So ideally, try and clear stuff off of the work unit before you begin, and you wanna go right up to the back of the unit and a long skirting board unit area, and you can also wipe down the walls at this stage as well, which will remove any bacteria from your walls or food splashes from your walls. The art of wall washing. We're bringing it back team, the Haley's Help channel. We're gonna start a revolution of wall washing. Once you have cleaned your work units, go ahead and sanitize it with your bleach solution. This is what is gonna get rid of any germs, any bacteria that is lingering on your surfaces and then you can go ahead with your microfiber cloth, dry it off and you will have the cleanest work surfaces on your street. To your kitchen handles we're going to use a slightly different method here we're going to go ahead and use the antibacterial washing up liquid you don't want to use anything too harsh on high gloss because it will ruin it so go ahead and clean them with some hot soapy water preferably antibacterial and any of the like nooks and crannies you need to get into you can go in with your good grip and scrub away with that And once you're happy that you've cleaned them, make sure you go across the top sections as well, like so. And I've got a little hack for you now. On your cupboards, you will never be able to get to this bit because it, got, it stays inside. So there's a bit there that stays inside. What you wanna do is get your cloth and Flatten it out so it's completely thin like this and just push it in and give it a little zhuzh, zhuzh, zhuzh. And that will enable you to get the bits that you can't get to otherwise. Go ahead and buff it dry again with a clean microfiber cloth. And then what I like to do, because I am Wrigley's Extra, is I like to use these jewellery bags. You can get them from Zara. They come with, so go and treat yourself. Treat yourself to a bit of jewellery. They come with the jewellery inside of them and they also put their perfumes in them as well. And these are really, really good for buffing off like high gloss surfaces, stainless steel. Um, so I go over it with this and it doesn't leave any um, kind of lint or, you know, any 
fabric on your unit. When it comes to cleaning your kettle, there's a reason why it's called a handle. It's because it is handed by all. Everyone touches this. My kids come in and they're like, oh, I'll make a cup of tea to dip a million biscuits into. Uh, Robbie the Ranger uses it, I use it. So it's, again, another high traffic area. So to clean your kettle, go ahead and use antibacterial washing up liquids and give the whole thing a really good scrub. Again, with your kettle, you don't want it to be soaking wet, so just use like a damp cloth rather than a soaking wet cloth. And make sure you get the handle in particular. This is the most important part for me, is that the handle is clean. Once you have done that, you can go ahead and buff it dry. And you have now got two options. Option one, you can go in with some hair conditioner and it will polish it up lovely, just on the stainless steel bit, not on the handle. Or you can use your free Zara jewelry holder, which is what I'm gonna be using today. And this really does make things just shiny. For your switches, use something like Sif once again on a damp cloth. You don't want it soaking wet, you want to wring it out as much as possible because you obviously do not want any water going in the electrics. Make sure you switch them off before you begin and you need a tiny, tiny amount on the cloth. The pea size amount is absolutely fine and then you can go in and that will remove any grease or grime that is caked on to your kitchen plug sockets. Once you've cleaned them with your cream cleaner, you can go ahead and sanitise with some bleach. Just mix one part bleach to one part water and once you've sanitised all the areas, you can then go ahead and with a clean, dry microfiber cloth, just buff it off and they will be nice and clean and germ free. Are you taking notes, Robbie the Ranger? Are you taking notes? blocks are a pain in the neck especially if you have wooden ones this one cannot get overly wet and if you've got wood the same applies because what will end up happening is you'll rot the wood it then starts to expand and you've just got a hot mess on your hands so what you want to do is go in with some antibacterial dish soap you want to use it on a damp cloth and the key here is we want to get it dry as quick as possible so we really don't want to we want to be quick time is of the essence here you know we're like power puff girls time is off the essence so rub the dish soap all over your knife block and then we are going to use some hydrogen peroxide just spray it all over your knife block and now we need to dry this sucker ASAP.
Your dishwasher, once again, you wanna go in with a cream cleaner and clean the whole entire area of the dishwasher, paying particular attention to this handle bit here. Again, this is a high traffic area, so you will find that bacteria and germs lingers here. It will also linger on the buttons as well, once again, because they're high traffic areas. So just make sure that you get into all the buttons and you clean it up nicely with your cream cleaner. Then we are gonna go in with our bleach solution to sanitize. We are going to go in with our cream cleaner again because it's got 100% natural cleaning particles and who doesn't love a cleaning particle? I mean, as soon as I hear cleaning particle, I'm sold. And we're just going to rub all over the front of the fridge. You can also pull your fridge out, which I do advise doing on a regular basis and get around the sides of it, underneath it, because there will be food and all sorts of lovely things lingering. Once again with the fridge, once you have cleaned, you're gonna go in and disinfect. Use your bleach for this, or you can use hydrogen peroxide if you prefer, or you can use antibacterial washing up liquid. Whatever takes your fancy. And once you've done that, go in with your cloth and give it a dry. We have got one of my favourites, it is the Cinderella method. For this, we are just using antibacterial dish soap. The reason this is so good is it cuts through any grease and grime. And the reason that I love, love, love the Cinderella method, Sing Sweet Nightingale, is because these baseboards around the kitchen, they're often neglected. Like, you'll mop your floor and a lot of people don't, think about these areas and you can't really see because the units come out so there is often a lot of grime and dirt along here whereas when you're on the floor and you are cinderella in your floors you can then go ahead and tackle these areas at the same time and what the dish soap does is it cuts through any grease and grime that is on your baseboards and it also um has antibacterial properties so any bacteria that might be lingering that can kill it off cleaning the sink area there's so many different ways and things that you can use different products that you can use to clean your sink with um, mine varies based on just how I feel on the day. Today I'm gonna to be using the cream cleaner just because we are loving those cleaning particles. Make sure you go over the whole entire sink, paying particular attention to the handles and these areas here. These become particularly grimy, especially around the back area. And you wanna use like a good grip or a old toothbrush, just something where you can really get into all of the crevices around your sink to remove any old food that might be there, any bacteria. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and rinse this off and then we are gonna head over and disinfect it with some bleach. You can use hydrogen peroxide if you would prefer, but this is the Hayes Help YouTube channel. I'm just gonna kick it old school and use bleach. Once I'm done with my good grips and scrubbing brushes, they just go inside my dishwasher for a clean. Once that goes on, it will be put on a hygiene clean, so they will be nice and hygienical, how I like it. Thing 
I like to do around the sink area is just spray some lime scale remover around the whole sink. This just makes it nice and shiny and it makes it look quite new again. So that will sit for a little while. I will then go ahead and rub it in. We will rinse it off and then we're gonna move on to Buffy. It's 10.30 p.m. We've seen Robbie the Rangers clean. We've seen Hayley's help clean. But who is gonna reign triumphant? It's time for you v me. is going to be the light switches so these were particularly dirty Robbie hadn't cleaned them at all these are high traffic areas there will be lots of bacteria on them usually because that's just life so let's see how my results fare up with his results spotless I mean, come on, there's no bacteria lurking there. Next up, we have got the knife block. Let's see how this has come out. Look at that, squeaky clean jelly bean. Now we have got the hob. Now this was filthy. There was lots of food residue on this from where our eldest son had been cooking. And now it's as clean as a whistle. was an absolute hot mess. It was covered in filth from the high traffic areas and now these areas are nice and clean. Now this particular bit I am uber proud of because the door handles and cabinets in my house are a bit of a pet peeve of mine like I like them to be clean I like them to be sterile and I'm not kidding you I mean I think you'd be hard pushed to find a cleaner cabinet than that look how pristine the handle is and the cupboard there's not any smears on it there's no bacteria there's no germs I mean I just want an award for having clean cupboards. Okay, next up we have got the kettle handle. This was particularly grimy and it's come up really, really nice. It doesn't take a lot of effort at all to get things clean and sterile if you use the right products and you get a bit of a sweat on. Now we have got the sink in here. Although it was clean, there were a couple of specks that we found and those specks have been banished by Beverly Bleach. This area here, we Cinderella method it and I think we can all agree, this is the best way forward because compared to what it looked like before, when the ranger just whacked the mop out, there was a whole lot of grossness lurking on our kickboards. I'm getting lower. 
lower, because apparently if you get lower, 